What's going on, Melon Farmers? DMAC back with another episode of the Hamilton Huskies Franchise Mode for NHL 21. If you haven't already, scroll down and hit that like button, subscribe with the bell icon for new videos coming all the frickin' time, and in this one, we are doing the year six frickin' playoffs, man. We had a great season. It was marred by injuries, but we managed to pull through and have a decent record. Uh, we finished second place in the NHL for the second year in a row. I believe we were, uh, what were we, two, two points short. Two points short of the President's Trophy this year and last year. <laughs> so uh, anyway, in this one, as always, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that edit line screen, show everybody what we're working with this year. We got Lucas Raymond, Ryan McFarlane. Dylan Larkin on the first line with that plus five freaking bonus, man. And even McFarland could be a little better on that first line, man. But, I mean, still. Uh, second line, we got Jake Vertanen, Alexi Heponiemi, and Andreas Janssen. That's still a ridiculous second line. I That's the best second line in hockey. I don't care what anybody says. On the third, we got the rookie, Riley Kidney, 23-year-old Riley Kidney, Chris Tierney, the veteran, and Julian Gauthier rocking that third. And on the fourth, Sam Militich, oh, another kid, Corbin Lupel, and Tom Kunackel, another veteran that we got on our team that I think is going to make just a world of difference in the playoffs. On defense, we are rocking, as always, Morgan Riley, but Mikhail Sergachev is his right partner, even though neither one of them are right-handed. Doesn't matter. On the second pairing, been here since the beginning, Brett Pesci and Shane Gostisbehere, Logan Stanley and Cal Foote rocking that third pairing in net. As always, my boy, Philip Gustafson, who is finally healthy this year for the playoffs. He can finally start putting that 87 poise to good use, man. So in the first round, we are going up against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So yes, we are going to check view lines. And we are going to see what is going down with these Penguins, man. Let's see what they look like this year. The Pittsburgh Penguins are Jason Zucker, Yanni Gord, Kasperi Kapanen on the first line. Man, Nino Niederreiter, uh, Nathan Gaucher, or Gaucher, or... I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Connor Siri on the third. Vinny Hinney. Uh, Nick Backstrom and Tyler Toffoli, so a good veteran friggin' third. And they got uh, Jan Drozd, uh, Andre freaking Kopitar, who has 91 poise, but his speed is 72. And he has no durability whatsoever, man. All the discipline in the world, and he's still got a hell of a shot. So we do have to watch out for him. And Timothy Bugstad, the 77 overall playmaking center. He was a second round pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins three years ago. On defense, Ivan Provorov <laughs> and Noah Hannafin. Oh my God, Pittsburgh's top pairing is ridiculous. What did they play? In the regular season, Provy had 61 friggin' points and he played 26 and a half minutes. Noah Hannafin, what did he play? Noah Hannafin played 26 and three quarters for Pittsburgh. <laughs> He's another one. He had 60 points. My God, that is a ridiculous top pairing, man. But after that, P.O. Joseph, Justin Schultz, Scott Mayfield, and Mats Johnson. Or Mats Janssen, sorry. Mats Janssen. Top 4D, potentially. He's 22 years old. The 29th overall pick. Four years ago for the Pittsburgh Penguins. In net, they've got Matt Murray. <laughs> Matt freaking Murray is in net for Pittsburgh. And they got Taylor LaRose, LaRose? Or LaRose? Taylor LaRose or Taylor LaRose. I'm not 100% sure, but they don't have a backup goaltender. And after their top pairing is off the ice, they have like no defense. And Matt Murray is like shaky at best, you know? <laughs> I like our chances, but... Pittsburgh has looked like the weaker team before, and they have come back to bite us before. So, I'm not going to take them lightly regardless. And here we are, jumping into Game 1 of the 2026 freaking Stanley Cup playoffs here at home against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We need to hold them off the freaking board. We need to play smart. There's a power play. Can't do anything with it, man. They're holding it. It's because they got Provy and Hannafin, man. Provy and Hannafin. Are, they're even holding us off the shot clock. This could just be a really... Uh, low shooting, low scoring series, even though, boom, Lucas Raymond, baby, 
puts Hamilton on the freaking board and we score first in the play. Ah, but Tyler freaking Toffoli gets one back for him. Man, all right, all right, all right. That's fine. We struck first. That's always a good sign. When we struck first, we outshot them. Let's just keep on going. Come on, boys. Don't let them right back in now. Let's just, no, there we go. Jake for tan and never lets me down, man. Best contract I ever signed on the freaking Hamilton Huskies. And Connor Sheary gets it right back. Come on, Gus. You have all the poise in the world, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, my God. Vinny Hinnestroza puts it in. My goodness. What do we have to do, man, to just succeed in the playoffs? We've got a super team. We just can't ever seem to succeed and just take over games and stuff. Ah, oh, so we give up two difficult goals in the second period of that one. Let's keep going in the third, man. It is only game one, regardless. It's only game one, but you don't want to start dropping games at home. So we just got to get on the board. Get Oh, Yanni Gord. <laughs> You're breaking my heart, Pittsburgh. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, and it's five to another the power play again. Oh, my God, man. So a difficult freaking game one to drop. <laughs> oh, dude. Five to two victory for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we drop game one. That is heartbreaking. Come on now. So we have to take maybe uh, Malcolm Subban decides to come back. Shane Goss Despair decides. I'm pretty sure I signed him for uh, a one year deal. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go and uh, actually look at that right now because I'm pretty sure I signed him to a one year deal. It's uh, 6.75 for one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. I'm actually most happy about the fact that Mikhail Sergachev is signed for another three years after this year. And it's for like, what is it? 5.5 or something like that? I don't know. I was just in the contract screen, but I like wasn't even paying attention. Anyway, here we go. Game freaking two. We got to get back into this one, man. We cannot let Pittsburgh make a fool of us here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Dude, we're like six minutes into the game. Come on, man. Don't you do this to me. Don't you do this to me, Hamilton, man. I put so much damn faith in you this year. Okay, Jake Furtanen. We got to start getting on the damn board. Ryan McFarlane. Oh, there we go. The big boy's starting to show up for us, man. And we exit the first period down in shots 14 to 7, but somehow winning the game 2 to freaking 1. Oh, my goodness. Here we go for the second. Come on, Hamilton. Let's uh, let's make that lead a little bit bigger, man. Don't let them back in. That's all we got to freaking do, man. There we go. Jake Vertanen makes it 3-1 to one for Hamilton in game two. All right. This is the team we need to beat. Minus all the shots against because that's killing us, man. <laughs> that's, really, that's really killing us here, dude. All right. And we leave the second period of this one with a great 3-1 to one freaking lead. Let's keep this train rolling. Maybe take some goddamn shots on goal. <laughs> We're being, oh my god, and Corbin Lupel puts in his first playoff goal as a member of the Hamilton Huskies, and we're, we're coming back. We're climbing up the shots, man. We're climbing up on that shot clock. Let's keep this up, man. Oh my god, are they ever out shooting us in this game, dude. But we're holding them off. Look at this. They're going to get 40 shots. Another power play. Holy crap, dude. We have, oh my god, 43 shots against. Dude, if, if Philip Gustafson is not the first star of this damn game, I don't know who is. You damn well better believe he's the first star of the game. Oh my god, that made up for game one entirely. So who got what in this one? Jake Vertanen by Ghost and Kidney. There you go. Uh, Ryan McFarland by Raymond and Larkin. Vertanen by Ghost and Janssen. And Corbin Lupel by Morgan Riley and Tom Kunackle for the 4-1 to one victory. Eight, they split us at home. But we are, I think, the better team. Anyway. All right, so moving on ahead, let's get to game three. We got that one back. We're feeling good about ourselves again, so we need to just keep this trainer rolling. But we are in freaking Pittsburgh now, man. I don't know how the hell they got 96 points throughout the season. They don't have a team. Unless, unless if we were to go look at the injuries, maybe? Maybe they got some injuries or something on this team. They're now there we go. Now we're out shooting them. But we can't be giving up too many penalties against Pittsburgh. Because they showed us that they put them in. Corbin Lupel again. Oh my God. This guy, I swear to God, Corbin Lupel. He had not the greatest uh, value in the world when I picked him up. I put him on the fourth line. He absolutely did amazingly well on that fourth line. I'm pretty sure he's a rookie this year. And it's like, I love the kid, man. I can't wait to keep him on this team for a long time. He could be like a second line guy for us. Freaking Ryan McFarland. There we go. The big boys that you need to friggin' step it up, man. They're starting to step it up now. 
That's what we needed. Halfway through the game, up 2-0, game three. Here we go, man. Don't let them in. Don't let them in. There we go. Kill it off. We are dramatically outplaying and outshooting them right now. We have not allowed a goal against Pittsburgh in this game three. Let's keep it that way. Going into the third. Boom! Andreas Janssen puts another one in. And it's three freaking nothing. Boom! Dylan Larkin. Four nothing Hamilton. Man, Pittsburgh has no juice against us right now. Maybe game one was a fluke. Oh, and Gaucher there. Gaucher. I don't know what his name is. Uh, Gauthier, I guess. I'm sure we'll go with that, man. Maybe game one was a fluke. I don't know what's going on, man. But I'll oh, get out of here, Bugstad. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Four to two victory in game three, and we take the freaking lead on Pittsburgh. Two to one in the series in this first round of the playoffs. Here we go. Corbin Lupel with his second by Kunakel and Militic. Militic, sorry. Ryan McFarland by Larkin. Janssen by Heppo and Riley Kidney again. Dylan Larkin by Raymond and McFarland. And that's it. Then they got two back uh, late in the third period. They got two goals back. Too little, too late. They couldn't take us down. So Ryan McFarland now finally freaking leading this team. Oh, that's going to be a sad day if he ever decided he didn't want to re-sign here. We like couldn't afford him or something. Oh, I don't know what I'd do, man. He's like, he is the face of this franchise. Uh, so actually, you know what? I did want to go and look at the injury report because I actually am really curious whether or not the Pittsburgh Penguins have got a bunch of... They have no injuries. That's just what they look like, okay? <laughs> I was like, hey, maybe they're just terrible because they had like a million injuries or something. <laughs> but I guess not. Okay, okay. That's fine, man. Let's go to times eight, times eight, and let's go on this game four, baby. We're up two to one in the series. Oh, come on. Mayfield scores in the first damn shot of the game for Pittsburgh. And we just got 11 shots on goal <laughs> against them. And they're winning the damn game. Oh, come on. Tabernak, big power play, big power play. Can't do anything with it. Come on, man. Come on, Hamilton. I hate going into another period. I, I hate going into the next period trailing, man. I really hate that. I always have. Whatever. Second period. Let's do it. Just, just don't let them come back in this series. Take that stranglehold lead, man. It's 100% what we have to do. We just got to take a stranglehold lead on Pittsburgh. If we can get this game, if we get back in this damn game, I think that top pairing is playing like 30, 30 to 35 minutes a freaking night, though, trying to keep them alive in this right now. But they're doing a good job, man. But even Philip Gustafson is doing pretty good in this game. I mean, he's faced 17 shots and he's allowed one goal. If I looked at his stats, he's probably got phenomenal freaking stats. Anyway, third period, game four, get back in this one. Don't, 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 don't. Okay, we killed it off. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Let's get in it. Come on, come on. There's freaking, oh, damn it. <laughs> Kasperi Kapanen puts it in to make it 2 nothing. Don't get shut out anyway. Come on, there we go. Freaking Militich takes a fourth liner to get us on the damn board, man. <laughs> That's brutal. Come on, come on. Nah, man, they tied the damn series at two. Oh, you're breaking my freaking heart, Pittsburgh, but we're going back home. We're going back to Hamilton. That was 100% a goalie show on the part of, uh, of Matt Murray, man. He's won a couple of Stanley Cups in his career, and it definitely showed right there. <laughs> so, game five. It looks like we're stretching this one out as far as we freaking can. We've already done better than we did last year, though. So, times eight. Let's just get this train a-rolling. Hey, every time we come out the gate dramatically out-shooting them, they seem to score first. So, let's not dramatically out-shoot them. <laughs> oh, Yanni freaking Gord. Now it's one nothing Pittsburgh. There we go, Cal Foot. Oh, blue line, and Lucas Raymond. There we go, now we got a 2-1 lead. Now keep them off the goddamn board, man. Quit letting them score on every shot. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Eponiemi ties it at, this is three to three in the first. There have been six goals on 20 collective shots. <laughs> this is a goddamn tragedy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second period of play. Okay, slow down the scoring, boys. Slow it down. Play some defense. You're going to be fine. Uh, but you don't make me regret getting rid of the grinder line, man. We got a power play that we can do nothing with. And here we go. Now it's a goalie show. Now it's a suddenly it's a goalie show. Ah, oh, freaking Niederreiter scores to make it 4-3 to three for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Don't you freaking do this to me, Pittsburgh. We're the better team. <laughs> we need to win this series. We are the better team. <laughs> By a mile, we're the better team. 
Oh my God, get in it. There we go. Oh, Andreas Jans, another power play. Oh, no, we can't freaking do anything with that one. Come on. Oh yes, Militic scores. Holy crap, Amoli. Hold them off the board, boys. Hold them off the board. Don't let them in. Don't let them in. <laughs> oh man, when all hope seemed lost, we take a three to two series lead. Oh, and the Pittsburgh Penguins, man. Calfoot by Gauthier and Kidney. Raymond by Larkin and Lar uh, McFarlane and Larkin. That's a hard one. Raymond McFarlane Larkin. Well, that was like a tongue twister. Heppo by Ghost. Then we got Janssen by Heppo and Kidney. And Militic by Tierney and Kunakle. That's what I'm talking about, boys. And we have got the lead in the series. Yet a freaking game. Ryan McFarlane has one point in his last two games. But he is still leading the parade. So I can't say too much about him. Oh, man. This is like bad on the old ticker, man. All right, so here we freaking go. Jumping into game freaking six up against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Here we go to start things off. We could send them home right now. Oh, shut up, Zucker. Urgh, Jason freaking Zucker. There we go, Larkin. Larkin gets us back into it, man. I hate how they keep scoring. They get the... Oh, McFarland, get us back. God damn it, Gustafson, get in front of something. What are you doing? You're an idiot. Oh my god, man. I just like, I hope they don't push us to seven, man. Don't push us to freaking seven, man. Come on. So, this is the freaking next, this is the second game in a row where there's been like five, six goals in the first period on like 20 freaking shots. Well, this was five goals on 24 shots, but it still looks very bad on the goaltending, especially considering Gustafson has a six, he has a 66 freaking save percentage. This is absolutely unacceptable. You have 87 poise and we're in the playoffs. You should be getting a shutout every goddamn night. Come on, can't do anything with the power play. They haven't even got 10 freaking shots on goal. Jesus. And they're beating us. This is absolutely unacceptable. Come on, Hamilton. Pull your heads out of your asses and win a goddamn series here. There we go. Andreas Janssen puts us back in this one. Oh, and we're tied again. And they got their backup goalie in net. Dude, the goalie they have in net is like 60 overall. <laughs> we better win this damn game. If we don't win this damn game, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Here we go. Third period, game six. Let's do it, boys. Come on, come on. There we go. Oh, baby. McFarland puts us ahead four to freaking three. And we're like double out shooting them right now. <laughs> Put another one in. We need that insurance marker, boys. We need the insurance marker. Come on, come on. Oh, we have the power play. Power play? Power? Nah, we can't do anything with it. Just don't let them back in. Oh, Andreas Janssen. We're going around too. And Dylan Larkin with the cherry on top. The freaking empty netter makes it 6-3. to three. What? An intense series where it shouldn't have been an intense series. <laughs> so Larkin by Raymond. McFarland by Raymond and Larkin. See? It's not easy. Janssen by Heppo Niemi and Riley. McFarland by Raymond. Janssen by Heppo and Riley. Again, and Larkin by Raymond and McFarland. See, that first line, man, it's such a tongue twister. It gets me every time. But we're moving on to the second freaking round of the playoffs. Oh, and am I ever glad. They took us to six. You got to give Pittsburgh credit. They took us to six, and I truly don't believe they should have. Especially considering they, they stole the first game. Look at this. Toronto went 10 and freaking 0 to end the season. <laughs> Oh my, dude, this is, wasn't it, uh, it was a couple of years ago, we faced Toronto in the first round or something, and then we faced Pittsburgh in the second, and then like the next year, it, it was like the other way around, and both times in the second round, we got absolutely mangled by the other team. They have 51, 26, and 5 is a damn respectable record, but you gotta think, 10, like 72 games into the season, they were only 41, 26, and 5, because they went a perfect 10 and 0 to end the season, and we actually kind of fell off the map a little bit, kind of near the end of the season. So anyway, let's go and view lines. We'll see what Toronto's working with these days. Uh, go all the way down here. Toronto, they got William Nylander, Austin Matthews, and Mitch Marner. So their top line is definitely better than ours. Second line, they got Robertson, Cahoon, and Greenway. So our second line is phenomenally better than theirs. On the third line, Sick, Hart, Walmark, and Schlappick. I think our third line is pretty much even. They might have a slight edge on us. And I think our fourth line is pretty much even. So their top line is slightly better than our top. Well, it's significantly better than our top line. 
but our second line is significantly better than their second line. What do they got on defense? Brady Shea, Timothy Lilligren. So I would say, yeah, our top pairing defense is much better than theirs. Our middle four defense, our middle two defensemen, uh, I'd say we're. I, actually, I, yeah, I'd give us the edge again. We got what? It's um, Ghost at an 85 and Pesci at 83. So, you know, our defense is better than theirs. Their offense is, I would say, maybe slightly better than ours. But our defense is better than theirs. And, oh, my God, our goaltending is better than theirs. Holy crap. I got to go and check. I'm going to check the freaking injuries, man. I got to see. Is that just what they got? Did they seriously? Did did they seriously win 51 games with no goalie? Freddie Anderson's gone till May. So he's going to return in like game 5 or something, game 4, game 5. Freddie Anderson's coming back. Okay. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> but the only problem with this now is teams tend to rally around that that backup goaltender if the backup comes in. The team tends to rally around that kid. So this we could have our work cut out with uh, work cut out for us against Toronto here yet a freaking game. So here we go, game one up against the Toronto Maple Leafs, man. Here we go. What do we got going on? I, I expect burst offense from Toronto, but I expect our defense to be solid. Our goaltending should outdo theirs, and actually we're kind of demolishing them right now <laughs> in the in the shots, but. Uh, again, it's kind of a goalie show at the moment. Everybody's hanging pretty tough right now. There's a lot of shots in this freaking game, though. And the first period is over. 25 shots later, no score. These are the kind of games, if you're a coach, like if you're a goalie coach, you love these games, right? <laughs> All right, so let's get into the second period of game one. All right, what do we got? Toronto's coming on really hard in this uh, early second period. Don't let them in. There we go, baby. That's what we needed to do. Ah, freaking Walmart puts it past Gus, but someone had to score eventually, right? Five on three? Nope. Five on four? Nope. Damn it. Guys, come on. What are you doing? McFarland. There we go. Oh, and Lupel. Corbin Lupel. I love that kid, man. I freaking love Corbin Lupel. Oh, get out of my life. They probably have an absurd power play, right? So just like after the first period, after the second, uh, we're going into the next game. Tied up. So last time it was 0-0. Now it's 2-2. Two two. Let's do this, guys. This is going to be a high-scoring series. Jordan Greenway. Oh, God damn it. Get out of my life. We have never, as a franchise, made it out of the second round. This is absolutely unacceptable. And they're just, look, they're just power play after power play. We're just taking penalties over and over again. It's like, this is redonkulous. Come on, guys. Like, guys, <laughs> work with me here. <laughs> and a 4-2 freaking loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs puts them up in the series one to nothing. Oh, I told you, man. They rally around the, the backup goalie, man. They rally. They freaking rally around him. All right, let's just jump into game number two. Oh my goodness. This is this is heartbreaking. But we dropped game one against Pittsburgh, too. So guys, quit. Oh, there we go. Happy Hemi. Haponiemi puts us on the board freaking early. It took them over five minutes to get a goddamn shot on goal. There we go. Held them off. Their power play went nowhere. That's 100% what we needed to see right there, baby. Here we go. Five and a half left. Down to four and a half. Come on. Let's kill this period with the lead. Kill it with the lead. <laughs> there we go. So we're entering the second period up. One to nothing on Toronto. They are really rallying around Parik, man. They don't want to let anything get by this kid. So let's just keep her going, man. All right, so we're about four minutes in. We got a power play. We could not do anything with it, though. My goodness. All right, so the halfway point of the game, and Dylan Larkin puts it in. Come on, hold him off, hold him off. There we go. Now, two-goal freaking lead nearing the end of the second period. Could we make it three? Could we maybe make it three? Parik's looking like a goddamn hero out here, and we can't have Parik looking like a freaking hero. So let's go. Third period. Here we are. Okay, now let's we gotta we gotta expand on this freaking lead. Don't let them in. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Thank you. Oh my god, quit taking penalties, you freaking idiots. What are you doing? Oh my god. Once they beat you once, they'll beat you a hundred times. Come on, boys. Long power play. Lucas Raymond on the power play. And we're up three to one. If you let them back in, I will murder you. Don't do it. There we go. Three to one victory, and the series is tied one to one. 
What kills me though is third period. This team just penalty, 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 penalty. It freaking drives me insane. So we got Heppo from Janssen and Stanley, Larkin from Kunakel and Riley, and Lucas Raymond by Kidney and Heppo Niemi. Ah. <sighs> So, we're advancing day, and look at this. Lucas frickin' Raymond leads the team in playoff points with 10 points in 8 games this year. The kid's here, man. The kid is here. He showed up. He's at the show. He knows what's good, baby. He knows what's good. Here we frickin' go. Oh, come on. Philly Schlappick. He's a third liner, and he scored a goal a minute in, and there you go. Ghost gets it right back on his first... So both goaltenders allowed the first shot of the game. It's like the hockey guy would always say, hey, the goalie says, you know, I wasn't ready for that one, so it doesn't count. Jake Vertanen puts us ahead two to freaking one, and there we go. Come on, can we uh, can we exit the first with the lead again? Because that uh, that seems to work out pretty well for us. So we outshot them 10-9 to nine in the first. We're outscoring them 2-1 to one after one period. Let's freaking go and let's take a damn lead on this series, man. I don't want to be out in two. I do not want to be out in two rounds again, man. This team has never made it past round two, and we need to kill that freaking curse, man. The Hamilton curse. We're going to kill it this year. Oh, and Mitch Marner ties it up at freaking two uh, as we're entering the third period. The problem is we tend to get outplayed in the third period because we take penalties. We play stupid. We don't know what we're doing. Ugh, here we go. So, uh, see, we take penalties. Oh, and it's a long one. What the hell? Come on, boys. <laughs> and we're taking penalties. Oh, my God, man. Stop taking... Oh! Ooh. <laughs> I hate this team sometimes. Get a damn goal. Quit taking penalties. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. Our team took like five penalties in the third period. This is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, so we're going to OT for the first time in the playoffs this year, man. Getting outshot heavily now. We were, I'm pretty sure we were out shooting Toronto going into the third. And they outshot us like 18 to 3 in the third period or something. So here we go. First overtime. Let, oh! <laughs> and it's a fuck. You idiots! What's wrong with you? You stupid assholes. Jesus, come on. Oh. When stupidity kills a team. You know what? Who the hell is taking all these penalties? I gotta I just have to see. Who is taking all the damn penalties on this freaking team? Chris Tierney. <laughs> Tierney, L Tierney and Larkin. Tierney and freaking Larkin are taking like all of our goddamn penalties. <sighs> if we lose in the second round, I am blaming this game. This goddamn game is what I'm blaming. If we lose, especially if we lose in seven. If we lose in seven, we never should have made it to seven. Like, they never should have made it to seven. It's absolutely unacceptable. Taking, like, five penalties in the third period and then beginning the first overtime with a penalty? It's like, no, nah, no, nah, man. That's not... It's the playoffs. That's how a whole team gets completely sold and rebuilt overnight. And Toronto freaking scored on us first! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Oh, Hamilton, you guys just don't want to win, eh? You guys really don't want to win. There's something about Hamilton they don't want to win. They never want to win the cup. Let's go. Get back into the goddamn game, you stupids. There we go. Jake Vertanen, the least incompetent among you. Ugh, and five on three. And it's a long one. Jesus Christ. Come on, boys. What are you doing? Come on, tie it up to go into the third, man. I don't know what happened to this damn team. It's like, oh. <laughs> and we finished the second period down three to freaking one. This team doesn't want to win. I swear to God, this team does not want to win the cup. Oh my God, man. And they're getting Freddy back. It's like, what are you guys doing? They're getting, and it's like a five minute major again. <laughs> When's the next power play? When's Toronto's next power play? I know it's going to be soon. I know it's soon. Come on. Oh, Schlappick scores anyway, man. He's having a hell of a series against us. Oh, nice. Too little, too late for the one goddamn power play of the game that Hamilton freaking got. Jesus, man. This is this is, this is a travesty, man. Holy crap, dude. Come on. It's 3-1 to one for Toronto. This is a... What a joke. It's like Freddy's back tomorrow. 
<laughs> if we if we make it, oh man. If we push a game six, Freddy's back. Maybe that'll make them play shitty. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go, game five. Fighting for our lives. And first shot of the game. <laughs> and power play. You know the way to and it's a five-minute major, like every goddamn night. Oh my goodness, man. Get in the game. Show some fight. Or I'm seriously going to sell this whole goddamn team and just rebuild from the ground up. <laughs> oh my God, boy. Second period. If you're going to lose it, just lose it then. Holy. I'm not even joking when I say I'll sell everything. I'll just sell the whole damn team. It's like the window's closed. <laughs> fight. <laughs> oh, Hamilton, fight. Show some damn fight, man. We're not even, like, are we even trying? Are we even trying to get back? They're out shooting us. They're out scoring us. This is, this is unacceptable. Oh, man, this could be it. This could be the final period. This could literally be the final period of the year. And we have a stacked freaking team that can't get out of the second round. And we've always had a stacked team that can't get out of the second round. Third period. Bring it to them, man. Bring it home. Get a damn goal. You don't want to get shut out in an elimination game and they scored a game. Oh my God. Come on. Don't, don't even. Don't do it. Come on. You can't get shut out. You can't get shut out in an elimination. Thank you, Lucas Raymond. The only one here still playing. <laughs> oh man. But it's over and we're out of the goddamn playoffs in two rounds. Like usual. Oh, man. Cal Foot. Don't care. I can't believe it, man. I can't freaking believe it. That is tragic. Second round again. Are we going to be like Washington when Ovi was drafted? It took him sick. To, what was it? Friggin' 14 years to win a cup? Holy crap. McFarland didn't even play bad. Like, he's got all the poise in the world. He's got great stats. His awareness could be a little better. <laughs> Raymond absolutely turned it the hell up this year, man. Holy frig. Larkin was killer. He didn't take a single penalty after I called him out for taking penalties. Hepo, Ghost. Everyone was saying, look, we're like, everyone's a plus. Except Kidney. Riley is a minus six? Our top defenseman is a minus six. That is disappointing. Oh man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sim ahead a little bit and we're gonna see who won the Stanley Cup. We're gonna get kind of uh, right before the draft, right before like the draft interviews kind of thing. Um, so that's May, that's June, here we go. So who's going where? Vegas and Dallas, uh, best lines, I don't care. Just get out of my life. I don't care, oh! <laughs> so who's going to the Stanley Cup Finals? They're not gonna tell us, eh? As long as Toronto doesn't win, Dallas wins the cup. Something tells me they won a couple in a row now. <laughs> so the new salary cap is 98 million. Oh my god, I can't even like, I can't, I, I can't even explain to you how just heartbreaking this is to me, man. It's like, this is the team. This was the team that was going to win. Oh, this is six years of failure. <laughs> six years of goddamn failure, man. Oh, so I'm going to, you know what? We're going to go to team management real quick. We're going to take a peek at uh, some of our dudes, some of our prospects. Uh, Riley dropped. He's getting older. He dropped. He still wants uh, He still wants an extension. Lucas Raymond finally jumped up to 86 overall. He's killer. But Riley dropping, man. Oh, this is bad. This is bad news. Ghost, he's still killing it. Sergachev dropped a top. or what? No, he was already top four, right? So Jake Vertanen, he wants five years at 7.1. Uh, I would give him five years, five years at 6.3, and then I'll trade him in a year or two. 
So we'll offer him that. Who else was there? Corbin Lupul still doesn't want to come back, but I own his rights, so there's nothing he can do anyway. Militic jumped a little bit, I think. Tierney jumped a bit. Pesci still staying the same, man. He is just a really solid uh, middle two defenseman, man. He's just a really solid defenseman. Mikey Anderson jumped back up a little bit. Austin Wagner. Uh, so he played the whole season. No, he didn't play the season with us, right? I feel like I wouldn't have put him on a line. <laughs> uh, I like Kunakel, though. He's, he's not really NHL ready anymore, but I'm sure we could find someone who could... Uh, Keep taking that spot. Anyway, who do we got up top? We got Riley Kidney, who is high top nine, 80 overall. He is officially a depth forward, but <laughs> uh, we are going to toss him on that third line again. I liked him on the third line. He did just fine. Uh, do we have any young bucks there growing at all? Where are the prospects? Where are the prospects? Way down here, we got Furlan, Pascal Furlan, who had 44 or... Yeah, 44 points. <laughs> I forgot I'd do math there for a second. Six foot one, 204 pound, 21 year old Pascal Furland, who was taken in the second round four years ago, could very well be a bottom six guy ready this year. Galiev wants a freaking extension. He had a decent season. They were eliminated from the playoffs. He wants to come back. Uh, what does he want? What does he think he's worth? Two years, he thinks. Uh, Galiev, you know what? I'll, I'll give you two years, but I need you to grow. If you don't grow, I think you're kind of screwed, man. And there we go. Esteban Sauer, who had 48 friggin' points in 64 games in the U.S. He was a plus six, 21 penalty minutes. He's, he's looking like he's going to be a really, really decent pick, and he's going to make it to the NHL really fast. Look at his size. He's six foot five, 206 pounds. This guy's an animal. <laughs> Oh, I love him. Yeah, I love him, man. We got Sato, you Sato. I took him in the seventh freaking round. <laughs> Low top nine. Uh, I don't think he ever makes it to the NHL, but he's decent, man. Not a terrible pickup. We got Reggie Sanford, two-way defender. He's a second round pick. He's 22, 6'4", 200 pounds. Decent enough, but he doesn't fit anywhere. You know, that's the problem. Payer... Uh, Mike Hickey, yeah, Mike Hickey jumped up. He got 84 points in 65 games in the USNA this season. He was a first-round pick two years ago. I like him. How's he been doing the last couple of years? Getting better every year. That's what you want to see, man. He's getting better every damn year. Lana Lang had eight points in 27 games. Uh, Ernesto Thomas, he's a grinder, sixth-rounder. He's never going to make it to the NHL. Do we have anybody else? Not overly... Uh, didn't we get that goaltender? Where's the high fringe starter guy? 62 overall already. I think he'll be... Look at the season he had. 9, 10, 287, five shutouts. Played 71 games. He could jump to like... He could jump to like 66, 67. You really could, man. He's 21 years old. That's not so great. But he still has a couple of years of uh, minor league eligibility. And then we got our boy. Our boy, David McGratton. 903, 316, six shutouts for the U.S. We got to sign him this year. I think he is the future in net. I think we're going to ride Philip Gustafson until it falls off the freaking wagon, man. Uh, but I'm honestly starting to think maybe next year, Freddie Berkvis could be the guy we go to uh, as a bat. Oh, no, never mind. We got Subban back, right? We got Subs back, man. And friggin' Philly got still 87 poised. That didn't really help us at all. I don't know that it was necessarily his fault, though. I mean, he's played 281 games, all of them with us, I believe, right? Yeah, every game he has played has been with us. And he's got a 9-11. He's got a 267, 9-11, 14 shutouts. He's 28 years old. But, I mean, he's got 173 wins, only 88 losses, 15 OT losses. Now, how is he in the playoffs this year? Not quite as good. He had a 9.04, 2.82 in 11 games. I mean, his playoff numbers are not great. They were last, or they were, sorry, two years ago. He was actually a really, really big contributing factor to uh, our success in making it to like game seven of the second round two years ago. We never would have made it there without Philip Gustafson. I just, I don't know what we, I don't know what we need to do to to strengthen our team anymore you know it's like we got this coaching staff it fits really well 
we, we got all these pieces that are fitting really well, you know, we got plus a million on every friggin' line. Our special teams are fantastic. Everything's fantastic. I'm thinking we might have to go all out and really deck out our, uh, I don't know, maybe really deck out that friggin' like top line or something. Maybe move on from someone like Larkin, get a really elite friggin', uh, the thing with Larkin though is he fits so good. I don't want to like move on from Ryan McFarland though, even though he's the guy on this team that fits the worst. If we could get a giant power forward for that top line, um, Vertanen fits so good there. What else do we got? If we could move on, maybe move on from Hepo Niemi, even though he got us 59 points. If I could move on from Hepo, find a playmaking center that fits that second line, or even just. What do we got? Where is he? Oh, yeah, in the system. Durr. All right, so we scroll up to the top. We got Riley Kidney. It doesn't show me where he fits. <laughs> Why is he not up in the NHL, man? So he's got, a, what was it, a one-year extension? Yeah, one-year extension, 900,000. If he could jump to like 82 or 83 and he fit like stupid good on the second line... I'd put him on the second line and we could we could grow this kid into like a freaking high top six player by the time he's 25. It'd be unreal. Ugh. Anyway, that is where we're going to leave this episode off. Sorry it was such a short one. I am horribly disappointed in this team. I was really hoping they were going to do a much better job and pull off. I, I don't even care if we win the cup this year. You know, I just wanted to get out of the goddamn second round. We've never made it out of the second round, and it's killing me inside. <laughs> but anyway, I think we're going to be taking a little quick break from the franchise mode. We'll come back in about a week. It's just I got really into it. Then we did the franchise weekend. It was really successful. It was awesome. And I got excited, and I'm like, I want to do more franchise modes and stuff. But you know what? I think we're going to take a quick break from that. We're going to try and get a little farther in the Be A Pro. And I will see you guys soon for the franchise mode. Always. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Hit like, subscribe with the bell icon if you haven't already. There's new videos coming all the frickin' time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.